flag. Of course, the biggest false flag of them all, 9-11. There was breaking news today on Alex Jones' radio show with Max Kaiser. We're going to have that for you right after the break. The globalist social engineers are not just targeting us with propaganda. They are manipulating our genetics. We are being targeted at every level by estrogen mimickers that lower our testosterone and other hormones and natural compounds that the body needs. The key is to be aware of this attack and to fight back against it. After consulting top doctors, nutritionists, pharmacists, and others, we have developed what I believe is the ultimate non-GMO organic super male vitality formula sourced from powerful organic herbs harvested around the planet and then concentrated for maximum potency. I've always believed in nutrition and herbs. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's own natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. Super Male Vitality by InfoWars Life is so powerful that I only take half the recommended dose. Visit InfoWarsLife.com today to secure your Super Male Vitality and other powerful products from InfoWars Life. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Well, welcome back. Now, as we pointed out in the first segment of the show, we've had some amazing news today. We had a state senator in California who is a major gun control advocate caught selling guns, even rocket launchers and an FBI sting. Now, of course, unlike Eric Holder and the ATF's Fast and Furious, or I should say False and Furious, he'll probably be going to jail. There doesn't seem to be any chance that they're going to go to jail. We also had a case where the Turkish government was caught red-handed, plotting a false flag attack, firing missiles on its own people so that they could start a war with Syria. And of course, we've seen that happening all last summer. They were trying to start a war with Syria. But today on the Alex Jones Show, Max Kaiser was a guest, and he pointed out some interesting facts about 9-11. Here's what he had to say. And this book called The Death of Money by Jim Rickards, uh, explains in great detail as an eyewitness who was there in the room while the CIA was monitoring insider trading on the airline options leading up to the days leading up to 9-11. I'm here to confirm that the CIA was trading on inside information against the deaths of many Americans on that day. And I'm here to confirm that Cantor Fitzgerald was also trading on those options against themselves. To talk about suicide bankers, Alex, these bankers were trading on their own death. So is it any surprise now that so many bankers are committing suicide? Uh, they're, they're psychopaths. Uh, we saw it on 9-11. We see it uh, on every day on Wall Street. Bankers committing financial terrorism. They trade on their own death. They trade on other brokers' death. You know, Max Kaiser, I've got to stop you. This is bombshell. I didn't know that you would break this here today. I want to just stop you. We're going to have to do a nightly news piece on this tonight and, and, and pull out all the original articles because I covered it at the time. Now, to repeat the key point, Max Kaiser said that he has an eyewitness who is actually in the room as the CIA was profiting from insider trading and planning insider trading associated with 9-11.
Now, this is not new news. It's new that we have an eyewitness report, but as Alex pointed out, this is something we've been reporting on for a long time. Look at this story from 2006. New James Bond film highlights 9-11 insider trading. In a movie, they say, when they analyzed the stock market after 9-11, the CIA discovered there had been massive shortings of airline stocks. When the stocks hit bottom, somebody made a fortune. Yeah, well, what they didn't do in the movie was actually tie that back to the CIA and the FBI, but other people did. We had this article from April of 2008. And actually, this was a transcript as well as an interview with a former German defense minister who confirmed the CIA involvement as he was talking to Alex Jones. He had worked for 25 years in politics, and he said he was a minister of technology before he was their secretary of defense. Then in 2009, we had an article about a rogue trader that highlighted the possible 9-11 and 7-7 UK insider tradings. According to an article in the London Times today, Society General rogue trader profited enormously on the day of the 7-7 London and bombings, and he also revealed how his company made huge profits on September 11th, 2001, prompting some to return to questions over insider foreknowledge of both terror attacks. Again, in 2010, we pointed out that the SEC said the government destroyed documents regarding pre-9-11 put options. That's where people were selling the stocks short, especially of the airlines. Again, on 2012, 9-11 insider trading, the facts laid bare. This is from Global Research. They say, arguably the best place to start is by examining put options, which occurred around Tuesday, September 11th, 2001, to an abnormal extent, and at the beginning via software that played a key role, the Prosecutor's Management Information System, abbreviated as PROMISE. And then finally, this last one that I've got here, and there have been many, many articles, and of course, that we wrote about it even before the first one of 2006, this one just last year. Did the Saudi intelligence chief and other high-ranking officials trade on inside information regarding 9-11? And they point out that several financial economic experts, and they list them there, say that there was insider trades right before 9-11 by people who knew the attacks were coming, who had no conceivable ties to Al-Qaeda, according to the 9-11 Commission. Now, the 9-11 narrative, as we all know, whether you believe it was insider knowledge, whether you believe it was planned by criminal elements of our government or not, you know that they have used this as a narrative to steal our freedoms, to create a police state, a surveillance state. And this is what Donald Rumsfeld had to say about this. Politically, what do those challenges turn into? If you're not going to have a lot of sympathetic ears up there. Uh, Until it happens. Well, that's what I was just going to say. Um, I mean, this president's pretty much a victim of success. We haven't had an attack here in five years. Uh, <clears throat> help. Um, the, 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 perception of the threat is so low in the society today yeah. uh, that, that um, it's not surprising that the behavior pattern reflects a low threat assessment. And the same thing is in Europe, there's a low threat perception. Um, the, 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 the correction for that, I suppose, is, is an attack. And, and when that happens, uh, then everyone gets energized for another period. And, it's, it's a shame we, aren't, we don't have the maturity to recognize the, 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 the seriousness of the threats, my God, the, 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 the lethality, the, the carnage that can be imposed on our society is so real and so present and, and, and so serious that, that you'd think we'd be able to understand it. Um, but as a society, actually, the longer you get away from 9-11, the less... The less Correction for that, I suppose, is, is an attack. Yes, false flag attacks like 9-11 are key to setting up the excuse for the surveillance state, to make people think that they can trade their freedom and get security in the bargain. But of course, once they establish that, they also have to condition us to live in that surveillance state. Right after the break, Leanne McAdoo interviews John Rappaport about how they try to condition us to live in that surveillance state. Stay tuned.
celebrate the spirit of freedom and liberty upon which our nation was founded at InfoWarsShop.com. Molon Lave is ancient Greek for come and take it. This popular design combines both classic Greek Spartan imagery with modern M16 assault rifles. Now available in women's tees and proudly made in the USA. And now you can protect yourself from corrupt cops with the InfoWars dash cam. It's your car's black box that records all that the driver sees and hears. And introducing the Block It Pocket. It renders your phone undetectable while protecting your private data and your health. Or take back your privacy and protect your personal information by getting your very own detractor cell phone pouch. So get incredibly high quality freedom based products and help fund the revolution at InfoWarsShop.com. My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Today I'm going to be speaking with John Rappaport. He is a regular contributor to Infowars.com. He is the author of two explosive books, The Matrix Revealed and Exit from the Matrix. He was nominated for a Pulitzer Prize. He's been an investigative journalist for more than 30 years covering politics and health, and you can read more of his work at nomorefakenews.com. Let's welcome John. Well, John, thank you so much for being here today. I'm a huge fan of your work. Thank you very much. Good to be here. We've got so much to cover today, so we'll just get right into it. Let's let's talk about one of your latest articles. It reveals MK Ultra mind testing on jazz musicians. Yeah, pretty fantastic. <laughs> This was at the U.S. Narcotics Farm in Lexington, Kentucky. I was actually in New York in the 40s and 50s when jazz musicians would get busted for drugs. They would either be sent to Lexington, Kentucky, or they would volunteer to go. And supposedly they were drying out from their drug habits. But actually what was going on was that there was a doctor on CIA contract there named Harris Isbell. And he was doing some pretty grisly experiments in mind control with drugs on these prisoners and uh, presumably on some of the musicians, including, for example, giving seven men LSD at four times the normal dose for 77 days straight and also giving uh, psilocybin by injection, shining bright lights in their eyes, inserting rectal thermometers to uh, monitor body temperature and so on. And then the payoff for this whole thing was, if the musicians volunteered for the experiments, they would be given access to their drug of choice. Wow. So in other words, they would get hooked back on whatever the drug was that got them there in the first place. <laughs> so this is completely insane. Uh, Isabel was sent over 800 drugs from the CIA mm. to try out on prisoners at the Lexington farm. Incredible. And we are always talking about the CIA being behind a lot of the drug running here, although they want to have the war on drugs. but. So it's no secret that the music industry is a, you know, a tool of the New World Order. Would you, is there any kind of indication of what sort of effect this testing had on their music? 
hard to say, but I'm sure it wrecked uh, the lives of a number of these people and made them vulnerable to all sorts of nefarious outside influences or influences within the industry and so forth. There was a very strict code in New York City, which was the center of jazz back in the 40s and 50s. You had to have what was called a cabaret card in order to perform at any club. And if you were busted for drugs, including even marijuana, they could take your cabaret card away from you. And then you couldn't perform live, mm. which was a big part of your you know, livelihood. So there was control being a 